we are two days after the marathon and two days that's about a time frame i consider being enough to uh, look back at the race and analyze the race to see what went well and what did not um, my marathon went pretty well i ran a personal best of 305 40 and what makes me the happiest is that I ran the infamous uh, negative splits with a uh, first half marathon in 133 and a second half marathon in about 132 with the last 5k of the race being my fastest. So because everything went pretty smoothly, I want to take you through my um, um, evening pre-race routine, my morning routine during race day and how I manage my body during the marathon and also my mind. The evening before the race, I want to make sure that my mind and my body are both geared toward running. So what I do is because I want to be in bed by 10 to 10.15 the day before a race, I would eat at 7 p.m. and I would have about 200 to 250 grams of pasta uh, with whatever tomato sauce, that's what I had, or I would just put some olive oil on it and I would drink uh, sparkling water, I think it helps with the, the digestion the day before the race. And um, I would end my dinner with uh, dark chocolate and um, a few nuts because I like it. Then at 8.30 p.m. I would stretch for about 10 minutes and uh, I would massage uh, my legs for about 15 minutes. And if you've done your training, the mind the night before the race is the most important part. You absolutely do not want to tire your mind too much and you don't want to collapse mentally thinking that you're not going to make it. So uh, what I usually do is watch a few running videos and what I did that Saturday, um, I watched Alip Kipchoge um, speech that he gave at Oxford. And why I did that, that's because I love how calm he is, uh, how graceful he is, and I want to carry over uh, that peacefulness uh, over the next day. Coming race morning and with the race starting at 9.15 a.m. I woke up at 7 and had breakfast at 7.30 with two slices of bread, jam, butter and water. 45 minutes before the start I stopped drinking and made my way to, the, to my corral and um, I think 15 minutes is enough to get into the right headspace and absorb the positive energy of the start line. Mentally I divide the marathon in two half marathons. I think it's way easier for your mind to think that you have to run two times quite a long distance rather than once a very long distance. So the start I was thinking make sure that the first half feels very very easy. I don't warm up for marathon because I would run the first 2k about a mile and a half significantly slower than my race pace. My race pace for this marathon was 704 per mile or 424 per kilometer and I ran the first mile and a half about 2k at 730 per mile or 440 per kilometer. Now finishing off the first half marathon I would put water on my face or grab a sponge at an aid station and um, clean my face just to feel fresh and uh, get ready to think now you have to run a half marathon. And the second half marathon I divided into two times 10.5k or about two times 6.5 miles. The first 10k about 6 miles would be 4-5 seconds faster per kilometer or about 8 seconds faster per mile than my average go marathon pace. And then starting off the second 6k, the second 6 miles or about 10k, I would have a gel. In fact, nutrition wise, I had solid food twice, first at mile 10 or 16k into the race, then at mile 16 or about 25-26k into the race and I finished taking a gel at mile 20 or 32k into the race. I think it, it's easier on your stomach at the end of the marathon to take gels rather than solid food. 
Now I ran the last 5k at 410 per kilometer or 643 per mile and I was only very focused on the finish line. The biggest lesson I've learned uh, from this marathon is that the, the toughest part of a marathon is not uh, that wall that you hit at 20 miles because you hit that wall whether you are dehydrated or you ran the first half way too fast or you haven't eaten enough to get through the first 20 miles. And what I experienced as being the toughest part of a marathon is going from an environment in, in which there is a lot of people that are cheering for you, they are supporting you and you get that emotional rush probably you start running faster and then you might take a turn or you will enter in a segment of a, of a race that there is no one and going from a crowded environment and feeling that adrenaline rush uh, to somewhere that, that there is no one that's very hard on your mind and um, to, to deal with that look ahead and prepare your mind probably telling yourself in about a minute the environment of the race is going to change and yeah the biggest le lesson is manage uh, the loneliness before it happens and uh, because if you, if you if you start running a, a stretch of road for about four or five miles and there's no one out there it's going to feel like it's a long way home but if you prepare your mind for it it's going to feel much much better mm -hmm.